chair. <laughs> but the chair would be nice too. My mom would have seats in their locals while waiting. Uh, thank you, Council. Um, we have two items on the agenda. The first one is uh, whether to consider uh, legal uh, specialized legal services in the area of land use. Um, I did provide you with a list of suggested uh, law lawyers that are interested. Um, I want to point out that Nancy Stroud did withdraw herself from consideration. Uh, and I also sent a memo out yesterday with two additional names. Uh, Donald J. Duty at Gore and Cheryl Duty in Israel and David Theriak at Theriak in Spain. And then council, it's your pleasure. What was the uh, an email you sent that you said uh, if we wanted to hear or Nancy had some suggestions? Her recommendation was David Theriac. Oh, okay. And um, who I have worked with, or I have never worked with, but I have been involved with him on committee work and activities. Um, an excellent lawyer, FSU professor. What's the council's pleasure? I'd like to suggest if it's okay or Audrey can tell us about procedure that we pick some and have them come in so we can talk to them at the next meeting rather than just pick a name. Yeah, no, I, I think mean, that I, sounds great. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what, what is your proposal? Oh, sorry. I can't hear uh, what you're I'm, saying. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I must be mumbling. <laughs> <laughs> We're all uh, tired. Go ahead. That's yeah, Fred's yeah, job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just said that... Um, we don't know any of these people, and um, I mean, if we took Mr. Theriak and Audrey can make suggestions on others to have them uh, come in, whatever the Audrey would tell us what the right procedure is, uh, and have us meet them and pick one next time. Right. That, uh, that's and the only logical thing I can think of. Uh, generally, you, hiring an attorney, you do want to meet the attorney first. Okay. Um, you probably don't need to bring in all the attorneys. Right. Um, and I did encourage, I hope some of y'all might have gone to some of their websites to take a look at um, how each firm has yeah. an approach. But they all are excellent lawyers, all excellent law firms. Right. Um, yeah, I think that's great, but I, I agree with Peter. I think we ought to meet them and have them come in. I agree. Now, would you like me to negotiate a retainer so we have some parameters in there so you meet them and assuming everything is good, you can approve the retainer? That evening uh, the only question is would we would the, the people who don't get picked think you're wasting my time with this or you think that's well normal? that's a question if you yeah no I would not negotiate three retainers or four oh, retainers. Okay. I was going to be if you selected one person now if you want to shortlist uh, two or three lawyers and have them come in uh, so you can meet them see their approach uh, we can well, certainly do so. Greg, what do you think? Well, what's the total number on this? I, there was four at one time, and then we dropped um, one. Right now, I have um, it's, the it's, four it's that are listed, but uh, Mrs. Ms. Stroud did withdraw her name, and Sorry. then I added two more okay. on a list. So I talked about, well, I actually called a few more, and then some people were not available at all. I guess my suggestion would be similar to what we do, I guess, with any type of, uh, you know, like a sealed bid. Have staff, your staff, look at it based on a rubrics and say all right here's our number one choice and maybe have the top two choices come in and we interview them and then let you negotiate the fee at that point right. so that's how we do it i mean that's how we kind of do it at the fire department is that like we're out for bid right now for a uh, <coughs> consulting firm for okay. uh, a, for a facilities report so we we ranked them and did a rubrics that way it kind of alleviates us just picking all right but I would suggest Mr. Theriak based on the suggestion that. Well, yes, I mean, it's, it's going yeah. to be based on her. And then uh, whatever else you think, Audrey. If you want more than one. Um, well, like do you think we should just see him? Or, or I mean, what do you. I think if, if you find him satisfactory, I can provide you with his curriculum vitae. Um, yeah. It's pretty I mean, extensive. I think, I think if, if our legal staff recommends one we should right. go with that and interview him then if we don't okay. like him i'm good with that okay and, and that doesn't put the other people out yeah either. Right. okay so what it's good i agree sir i'd like to see two okay i'd like to see the one that was recommended by nancy strauss right and then i don't know is there is there one female on the list uh the other female on the list uh after miss stroud uh, withdrew is susan trevarthan okay why not look at two okay and, Fine and by me. Because of female? Yes. Okay. Among other. <laughs> okay, is there a motion? Any further discussion? 
Okay. We need a motion, Audrey, or not? Um, as Direction. I understand it, um, as far as if you're ready to select, you could do so, but in this case, you want to shortlist it to two attorneys, invite them to your next council meeting, the June 15th meeting. Yes, and it would be Theriac and... And Susan Tr Trevarthen. Trevarthen, okay. And again, they both have different styles. One comes from a bigger firm, one comes from a yeah. smaller okay. firm. Can, can I ask one question? Absolutely. By having, <coughs> by having us talk to them in a group, are we in any any possibility of giving anything away on what we're working on or what or whatever? Which, if we are, I'd rather have us meet individually with. Well, hold on one second. I okay. do want to point out that in order to do a conflicts check, I did have to tell them some of the issues. I had to tell them who the potential yeah. uh, folks were. So if there was a conflict, they were able to. Oh, well, obvious. I, I'm concerned about. <laughs> I think Fred's asking about room. like um, <coughs> the, way, the, the way Tool was picked. It was private. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I get, if, as long as it's just going to be an interview where they tell us about their credentials and all that, but I don't really want to see anything that would be said in here that could possibly disclose anything to anybody. Okay. How do you want to do it, Audrey? Point of view. I have no idea at this point. <laughs> um, it's getting late. Yeah, I don't know what we would disclose in here that, yeah. that well, we, I know I mean, if, I not talk, if I talk to them individually I would ask them questions that I'm concerned about some of these situations in here I don't want to do that and I think we all shouldn't can we make them available individually sure I mean would that I can work see right if they can come in yeah that's fine like, I just I'm just yeah. and that I mean, might that be solid. Solid. Yeah. yeah quite and, frankly that might be easier than having them come into a city council a, meeting yeah because if they come into a city council meeting and they have to wait here for two or three hours right. that, that's very difficult right. on an attorney's time but uh, we could have something set up where uh, they do if we could get your schedules meeting. coordinated <laughs> um, they hours, meet another. with you individually um, do all of you want to meet individually with them yeah so we'll do yeah. it that way okay and anybody not want to meet individually it doesn't matter to me. I just okay. don't, I, I don't want to waste their time. So do it the date of, do it after uh, that date, whatever the date of the next council meeting is. All right. If they're so available. So before the, the June 15th date. Uh, day before, yeah. Okay. All right. If that's all right with everybody. If, if their schedules allow, yeah, no, and right? your schedules, okay. of course. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, item B. Item B. Uh, thank you. This is a uh, request for a waiver of conflict from Rutzel and Andrus. I don't know if Mr. Pritt was able to be here or anybody from his firm. Um, we have used the firm currently. Uh, we have two cases pending. One is the Brooks at Commons Club, uh, and uh, his firm, Chris Donovan, filed the appeal or the petition for writ of certiorari. And we also uh, used Mr. Pritt for the car wash for Cardone. Uh, Mr. Pritt has a long-standing relationship with Ron Sabatino, who is a developer in the Northwest Quadrant. And yes, they are aware of the city looking at the Northwest Quadrant study. Um, uh, he did want to have a waiver from the conflict. It is a limited waiver. Um, if it gets to a point of litigation, uh, he, would, he and his firm would not be able to do representation. Uh, that is in here. I was, I'm a little bit. Uh, is he himself working for the city? Yes, uh, he has worked on the Cardome uh, writ of certiorari. He did some review work, but in addition, he helped um, with the Fludra case uh, before that. Uh, what is your suggestion? Um, I have no objection because it is unrelated to the representation that they've had with the city. Okay. I don't think he would have obtained any special strategy as a result uh, that could advance his interest and I'd rather Mr. Sabatino have Mr. Pritt as competent counsel than other people. Um, it is a situation where we are, you know, they are aware <coughs> of um, certain issues, you know, the, the study, study going forward. Okay. And the, the issue with the city deals with a master concept plan and how to go about reinstating it and going through the zoning process uh, for that. Okay. And this is only for uh, up till litigation. So if, if no. we it did enter a lawsuit, he'd have to step out and his firm. Or ask for another waiver. Conflict. Right. Okay. okay. I'm okay with it. 
And I want to point out, we did waive conflict on an eminent domain issue for Ken Jones and his firm to do representation of Don Cola Pietro. So, I mean, we have done that in the past. Yes. Okay. This I need a vote. Motion. Okay. So motion to approve. Second. It's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Mayor Simmons? Aye. Councilman O'Flynn? Aye. Councilman Gibson? Aye. Councilman Forbes? Aye. Councilwoman Carumba? Aye. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. Thank okay. Uh, I, Audrey, anything else? No, sir. Okay. Um, item 12, City Manager's <laughs> Report. Carl. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First item is the water tower, and First Nicole time. is here to chat about that. <laughs> Good evening. For the record, Nicole Perino, uh, Parks and Recreation Director. We have now taken another look at the water tower thanks to the Bonita Springs Fire Department. We actually got a very close look at the tower. Um, I myself have been up three times, so I've seen it <laughs> quite a bit. So we have looked at every angle of the structure uh, as possible, and we have come up with an additional option that uh, we also do have a quote for now, which is in the errata, um, which is the quote from Hunt Construction. Um, we do have five options for you to look at. Uh, the first one is just to replace the roof and leave the rest of the structure in place. This isn't one necessarily that we're recommending due to the rot at the bottom, and we do need to fix that as well. Uh, option two is to replace the roof and the rod at the bottom, which is the one we are recommending that uh, you go with due to we feel this will leave it structurally sound based on the quote we have from Hunt Construction in how they will be building the roof as well as how they'll be fixing the rod at the bottom. Option three is to crane the structure down, which was what we were going to do um, at the last meeting was to crane it down and then take it to another location. Um, we don't have a location determined at this time, so if that's something you do choose, we will have to look into that. Um, the fourth option is to demolish the structure. Um, and the last option is do nothing. Uh, the do nothing option isn't really an option due to the fact that it isn't structurally sound and there are things we need to do with it. Um, so doing nothing kind of isn't on the table. We did want to point out, though, that we did not put an option six, which was the replica, since that was voted on before as, as not something you are interested in doing, as well as the Historic Preservation Board. They said they would recommend it, but that wasn't an approval from them. Uh, so based on those, we are, again, recommending option two, which is replacing the roof and the rod at the bottom. What that also entails, the roof will look the same on the outside, but it won't be the same on the inside because it will have the different overlays making it structurally sound. It is engineered. It will have straps for hurricane, um, so wind will be wind rated and things like that, and we can't do that and make it original looking. So it will look a little different on the inside, but the outside will look as, as similar as we possibly can. And the, the rod at the bottom will, of course, be lasered off and then new wood will be put on it will be puttied together so on the outside it will look the same um, but on the inside it will be new wood so it will also be um, completely sealed up so um, as best we can because some of the pieces are older um, so that water intrusion doesn't get in and it should be safe and secure for years to come so that is our proposal. We have met, again, with uh, Hunt Construction. They, they feel this is the best option and a good option for us. So that's the uh, recommendation that we're going with. Great. Council? Mr. Mayor. Fred. <coughs> I would like to make a motion that we approve option two with a small caveat, and that is that we need a hatch in the roof because you don't want to fix the tank and not ever be able to get inside to see what's going on and that's a few hundred dollars there may be they should really do a little bit more attaching it to roof and so my motion would include that Carl the city manager would be able to approve minor reasonable additions to that original eleven thousand dollar quote there I just did want to, to 
speak a little bit about the hatch on the roof. We have talked to engineers. Um, they don't recommend the roof if you are going to make any sort of hatch. They're proposing it on the side of the building and not the roof um, because they said that that could cause additional water intrusion, wind issues with the roof. So they said if you, if you do add that, they prefer it. we not go at the roof, as right. well as we don't <clears throat> have staff that can repel into it. Fred, is that all right? I mean, if you think about adding a hatch on a roof, That's that is inviting. That, there's, all, <clears throat> there's all kind of roof hatches all over the place. Right, but <clears throat> is that inviting more of a water problem? Truthfully, not that much, no. <laughs> but not I mean, that much, but yes. Not well. I think you're thinking also in commercial buildings there's hatches. In your yeah, family I mean, home there's a, not a one. A roof hatch isn't, right. a big, it isn't a big deal. It's... So are you opposed to having the hatch on the side? Well, I think you're, you're, we've gone to all this work trying to make the outside look the same. Now you're going to cut a door on the outside. But I Let don't me ask a question Pete. without getting into much engineering. It's never had a hatch. I mean, it's never had one. So why are we, I mean, we all respect Well, and it got into a real bad shape because it's, <laughs> I don't care. Do whatever you want. Well, no, no, I'm just I, saying. No, no, I don't care. Uh, yeah. I don't really care. I, I, if you don't care, you, why don't we just know, not have it? Well, I do care because <laughs> to seal that thing up is inviting trouble because it's going to rot or have the damage from well, the inside out. Issue. That's a different issue. But Nicole, I, could you explain the hatch on the side again? Um, well, we actually didn't get any contractors recommending any sort of hatch at all, but um, I did speak to Councilman Forbes okay. about it, so I did look into it A hatch um, in a, and a round tower on the side it's going to be difficult to make, and it's going to leak a lot more than one on the roof. A flat, a little, a little two by two hatch, you know, shouldn't be a big deal. But <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Carl, um, you know we've gone up at this now with Hunt, w with the ability to basically seal the thing shut, so that there should be no intrusion. I'm not certain we need a hatch um, because the way they're proposing this they're going to putty it up as Nicole indicated putting a brand new roof on it there's going to be there's there's the charge here for um, you know the the rolled roofing over there to protect from additional water on the roof um, I, I really don't see the need to cut a hole in a brand new roof just so we can get in to look at it I think it's going to be all sealed up I think it will be fine for years to come, mm -hmm. and we'll and we'll continue to watch it. Mm -hmm. And and the fire department will come over more often. You can always <laughs> you can always cut a hatch at a later date, correct? Right, if you need to. Um, I'm assuming yes, but I don't know for sure. You can always put an inspection hole in it. Yeah, yeah. for a little inspection camera with a light, right. take a peek inside. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. What about that? But you have to have a hole again. No, no I mean we can do it at a later date. Later. You don't have to do it right this time. Yeah. If we suspect something five years, ten years. We suspect that you're going to have seen something from the outside, and it will rot from the inside out. But what about a small camera hole that they can put in, you know, like a, like a laparoscopic uh, thing? <laughs> I think any nothing. intrusion, like the city manager said, any intrusion is just yeah. going to invite moisture in there. If they're going to seal it tight, you shouldn't yeah. get anything. It's, it's better than nothing, so do that. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion, council? Fred, I think you made a motion. Well, I'll, I'll amend my, or I'll, I'll withdraw it and restate the motion. Go with option two, put a little little cap hatch or a little round on the side where you can put something in to inspect. Authorize Carl, though, that in the process, if he needs to make a minor adjustment to the cost, he don't have to come back to ask us. He can ask the mayor. Okay. There's yep. Are we clear on that motion? Yes, sir. We're talking about it now. Yep. Yep. We got it. We got okay. it. Second. There's motion and a second. Further discussion? Well, and the, the, the peephole, wherever they think it's best, on yes. the bottom or, or the side. I'll yeah. get with the contractor on yeah. that. Okay. Motion, second. Further okay. discussion? Roll call. Mm -hmm. Councilman O'Flynn? Aye. Councilman Gibson? Aye. Councilman Forbes? Aye. Councilwoman Karumba? Aye. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. Mayor Simmons? Aye. Okay, wonderful. I just want to compliment uh, Councilman Forbes for getting up in that bucket truck today. <laughs> and if anyone doubts it, I have a photo. <laughs>
Yeah, I learned more about the tank today than I planned. Well, look, there's a, mm -hmm. Alan, a lot of folks came together on this, so thank you. And congratulations. Just so the city council and the city manager knows, we're not going to charge the city for the grip marks. Uh -huh. Councilman Ford left in the top of the bucket. <laughs> Because we have an inside track, we can do that. Right, yeah. Well, we do need. He was to, hanging on tight. We we do need to give a vote of thanks to Jesse Purdom, who uh, yeah. actually called. You know, he called me and asked if I would reconsider my. Yeah, vote. absolutely. Thank you to Jesse, Allen, several folks that were involved in this. Right. Charlie, yeah. thank you. Okay, item B. Go ahead. And Wright, finance director, council before you is a proposed financial policy and it's being presented because it is a best practice by Government Finance Officers Association. I, it is lengthy, it's 12 pages, so I wanted to give you the opportunity to, to look through it, but I also handed out um, a document that focuses on some areas of it that I thought you wanted to, might want to give a specific attention to. A lot of the policy is straight out of governmental accounting standards and also some um, Florida statute, so that's pr pretty straightforward, but the, these other areas that I've focused on, I want, want you to be sure that you um, are comfortable with, with it, it as presented. And also, we are planning to bring this back to you July 6th, so it gives you a little over a month okay. to, to look through it. Please Great. call me if you have questions or recommended changes, and um, we'll, we'll work through it. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Ann. <laughs> questions or comments for Ann, anybody? No? Okay, Ann, thank you. I just, and I just want to let you all know about Ann because she has now been designated at a, as a Florida Certified Government Finance Officer. Um, that is based upon her education, her training, um, adhering to a code of ethics, um, as well as passing a very rigorous exam. So Ann, congratulations. Congratulations, Ann. Great, congratulations, Ann. Um, item C. Yes, briefly, um, we did not, as I suspected might happen, we did not finish the workshop today. Um, I'm recommending that on June 15th we come back, um, and that will be the one hour workshop. We come back, we finish up um, any questions or concerns about the uh, infrastructure, the um, stormwater system, and then go right into financials. Um, Council okay with that, doing that at the next meeting? I am. Yes, going to make one quick suggestion sure. just to be more productive. I had a good chat with one of the ABB guys today. I would appreciate when Tom's here, whether it's Tom or one of the other ABB guys, or it's, if it's right, um, as best they can, and he had a number up there today, an estimation of what the cost of the water retention system is there. Uh, so that's one. The second uh, request I would have if Ann could present at the next meeting the cash flow requirements over the short term, the next three years, related to the old, for, related to the old 41 project. And that, and that includes the debt service with respect to it. Okay. And if you need any more, I can chat okay, with you. you got, but You got that right. Okay, okay. thank you. Good. No problem. Great. All right. Um, and then I've got just a few. Well, so what will happen then is we're recommending that for uh, – June the 15th, July 6th, we're looking at presenting uh, financial information to you. Um, that, that would be the workshop. That, again, would be an hour and a half one. Um, and if council's okay with that, we'll, we'll schedule those for the next two workshops. Everybody good with that? Okay. An hour prior to each. Pardon me? An hour, uh, hour prior to Well, our, an hour ahead of our yeah, 9 o'clock meeting yeah. and an hour and a half ahead yeah. of our 530 okay. meeting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sure. Great. Okay. Um, yeah, let's let's do them after. <laughs> we brought up we brought up uh, the tree issue today on old forty one. You could not vote in the workshop. Um, does council have a change of direction on the trees for downtown? I, I think so. Yeah. I, I agree. Yes. I think so. Um, I mean, personally, I think I'd I'd really like to see palm trees. Um, a lot less mess. To me, it screams Florida. You know, you come down here, you expect to see palm trees. Mm. Um, I know they're not as shady, but uh, but yeah, I'd like to hear a proposal about doing palm trees instead. Well, but that's not the recommendation of the landscape architect. Right. Based understand. upon what's yeah, already but, down there. Yeah, we didn't really ask him that either, though. But. Well, if if one of the one of the things that's important is shade, 
um, palm trees are certainly not going to provide that at the same level as oak trees or the shady ladies. I think shade's important, but I also think cracked sidewalks and root issues and uh, mess. I mean, I, you know, I just was my understanding we'd come back and talk about it. Yeah. All right, so, so, I, so you I want think this there was discussed a at a different meeting? You're not ready to make a decision now? My, my big concern is the leaves. Um, you know, we, we've had the oak trees down there for many years, and the leaves are a huge mess. Um, I mean, aside from having somebody down there come go down there daily to suck them up as they're being shed, um, they just drop everywhere, they blow everywhere, and, you know, having a business there, it's, it's a mess that we have to fight with for months. Um, so I, I just think the palm trees would be the better way. You know, you drop a frond, and it's one frond to pick up. Fred? Well, well I was going to make a suggestion. Between now and our 15th meeting, <clears throat> why don't we find out from three or four cities, such as Naples, uh, Jupiter is another one that has well landscaped and manicured streets, and I think Destin or Weston, find out what they've got and what kind of problems they have with theirs. It's only two weeks. I don't think that's the end of the world. Yeah, but if, but I but I like Mike's Sarasota. idea. But maybe they maybe they have got yes. something that's shady in these places and they're not having the problems that they have with either one or the other two. It's a lot of trees out there. There's, uh, there's got to be another option. That's right. There's got to be. <laughs> we'll bite the bullet, Councilman Forbes. Me and you'll go downtown on uh, Sarasota this next week and we'll look at them. <clears throat> well, yeah, we'll check Sarasota out. Okay. We'll make a special and trip to Jupiter, too. Then you can oh, go to Destin and Weston. Yeah. How's that, Fred? Oh, that'd be okay if we get <laughs> mileage. <laughs> Is there some time sensitivity on this, Carl? Project's underway. All right. And you've got, you've got a certain amount of trees that are already installed. Um, but we'll, we'll do what the council Could asks. we have them hold off on putting more trees in, to, you know, for the time being? Um, oh, here comes Matt. I'm sure we could do that. Sure. Here comes Matt. Go ahead. <laughs> Don't mind, Mr. Mayor. Council. No. Dive right uh, in. Really, the fundamental issue is uh, you're, you're balancing two things, shade uh, with the tree um, and cost. So really, you know, the fundamental uh, point, other than the, the issues associated with a shady lady tree, was cost. It was a $30,000 increase. They have 200 or 90 of these oak trees already identified, and the, the nursery is trying to release those trees. So, so those trees can be released, and we can look at other options. It just may have some cost implications uh, depending on what size and species is decided upon. I think it's an important decision. I realize it's an inconvenience right now. I get that. I get that the, you know. But I think it's an important decision. For it's, one. it's really not a tremendous There's There were only ever four oak trees installed, and we replaced two of them with oh. shady ladies so that you could see. So, so they're not in the ground. It's, it's really an issue of if council has any inkling of pursuing the oak trees that the architect talked about, we're, we're really in a position where that nursery has another buyer for them. If they release them, we may not find specimens to that caliber. But regardless, whatever is decided, there's probably a cost implication to it. Okay. Carl? Okay, we'll bring it back. Um, I just want to let you know that uh, Arlene is out of town right now. Um, she's being installed as the president of the Florida Planning and Zoning Association uh, this week. So we're very proud of Arlene. And, right, Arlene. You know, Arlene, wherever you're at, I'm sure you're not watching. <laughs> she might be. You never know. Um, and then the last thing I've got is just, uh, it's already been mentioned tonight, but the Memorial Day service uh, was amazing uh, this year. It's always good. This year was special. I've, I've actually heard comments from unsolicited from folks about how special it was this year. Um, so I, I want to thank, number one, our uh, Veterans Affairs Committee that puts it on. Um, Laura and her team did an awesome job, and I'm just proud of everybody and proud to be associated with this organization. Right. It was a great, a great ceremony. And with that, that's it, Mr. Mayor. Great. Thank you, Carl. Okay. Item 13, Mayor and Council Member Reports. Amy, why don't we start down with you? Um, oh, yeah. 
because of the time, I'm just going to skip to the end. And, uh, but I, I do want to uh, comment also that because I attended the Memorial Day uh, Remembrance Service and it was very special and we should feel very proud of it. Um, but all the experiences I've had in regard to um, interacting with the community have been very positive, uh, starting with the um, thank you prayer breakfast from the Council of Churches. Uh, that was very good for me, and I thought it was nice that I just feel comfortable that they're trying to help us in the way that they do by our prayers and support. That meant a lot. And uh, I felt the same way about the dedication of the training tower, and I'll let you speak about it, because I thought that was another well-done ceremony that illustrated the best of what's uh, in Benita Springs, <coughs> both in personnel and <coughs> feeling and devotion to the, the work that they do for the community, so that was really positive. And I'm going to skip to something that isn't quite as uh, much fun, and that is to address the 26 emails that came as a result of my speaking to some people in my, res in my uh, community about um, our delay of the supermajority discussion and study. Um, it was a little amusing to get all the emails in some ways, uh, but uh, I was very surprised because honestly I spoke to two people. And I think that suggests that there is an interest in our pursuing it a lot sooner than six months from now. The reason why, first of all, I commend Fred Forbes in bringing that to the council's attention and for Audrey giving us some background on, on it, I think that we need to at least th think about it and explore what such a proposal would mean in a very uh, defined and specified way. I don't think we should have it in all decisions. I think we should be uh, at very narrowly focused kinds of ordinance. And that's what I would ask my council colleagues to consider. Uh, when I, not all of you had a campaign to run, um, and I still envy you for that you didn't have to go through the campaign. Thank you, Fred, and thank you, Peter. Why are you looking at me? No, not you. I'm, just <laughs> no, I'm, looking, at, I'm looking at the other Peter, and I'm looking I'm at I'm kidding. You no, know, but um, my experience from the campaign was there was a clear message that was um, given to me as I talked to many people throughout my district, and that is stick to the plan. We love the vision, uh, and if you make a commitment to that, we're going to be comfortable. It was reinforced by the EAR report. It was reinforced from uh, the LPA meeting where people were all upset about the amendments. They all said the same thing. And I think the council have missed a chance on our recommitting this council to the idea that we are definitely committed to the small town city uh, model that we profess to have. So I just, I'm not saying we should vote positively, but that we should bring it forward in a study a lot sooner than six months from now, and that's what I ask. You, you people have to do it because I'm not on the prevailing side. Mm -hmm. And that's what I say for my message. Great. Thank you, Amy. Greg? I just want to thank everybody for coming out to the tower dedication and to the memorial service. Uh, both, like Amy said, both of them were great, great, um, events well recepted and uh, very professionally done on on everybody's part so Great. we want to thank staff for everything great thank you uh, pete uh, let me just <coughs> address briefly what amy had raised um we're going to have a, a special counsel we're hiring to work with our extremely competent owned city attorney um and without getting into all the details taking fred's caution from before uh, what's implicated are, is an analysis of the lead, comp, the lead comp plan for at least one, two, three items, uh, an already existing uh, Benita Springs comp plan on a, th on a th third, on a second item, if you will, where I'm up to four. And um, that's where the rubber is going to meet the road. I think I can say that. And none of that implicates the notion of a supermajority vote because none of that relates to the Benita comp plan. So um, my view of the suggestion was last time, and Fred was making it, was that as a practical matter, that's where the action is. Um, and it seems like uh, totally well-meaning uh, email, emails we've received, uh, the notion of an extra vote 
is turned into a litmus test on whether one believes in small town charm. And I, I can understand that superficially, but it's not really where the rubber meets the road with respect to these issues. So that's my first point. Second point is um, there's at least, well, when you look at the city charter, the city charter more than implies that a vote, uh, that council acts by a majority vote. That's in the charter. So if we were to adopt a supermajority and then later, whether it was us or another council, didn't seem to like that and it was in a way of what they wanted to do, they very likely would be within their legal rights to simply rescind the supermajority vote. So that's my second observation with it, which I think the average person that was sending us emails, with all due respect, would have no reason to get into. So there's a certain ephemeral um, security that comes with it that could easily be extinguished. So, well, so we, we could have a, I don't think this is, we don't, it's too late in the day to right. have this debate because I disagree on right. both so, those things. Right. So, so I my, think but, but, I, I propose that we talk about it when we're, we can my, have a my, discussion. My suggestion would be that uh, because of what's happened, we should progress it mm -hmm. and look at it mm -hmm. um, and simply have you work with Audrey mm -hmm. as a council member to come up with something that you think makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's the simplest way to kind of nail this down. Okay, that sounds good to me. Okay. Thank you, Pete. Anything else? Mike? Um, well, yeah, there was a couple other things in the consent agenda I didn't want to pull out just to, you know, hold things up. Um, but the one was the uh, CDBG. I was just wondering if I could get a copy of the map of where that money is allowed to be used. Um, <laughs> and Absolutely. Does that change every year or is it like that map will apply for the the four years that we just uh, agreed to? Well, I'm not sure. I don't think it changes every year. Um, they do a reassessment periodically. We will get you the current map and determine how long it's in place. Okay. Okay. And then the, the other thing was the, um, the uh, grant for the facade and the landscaping. I didn't want to pull it, but uh, Magnus is doing an awesome job on Nelson's uh, Plaza. Um, I mean, it, it's above and beyond anything that's been uh, done down there with the uh, with the grant program. So, uh, you know, hats off to them. Uh, it's uh, beautiful. Um, and then the last thing uh, with the 4th of July coming up, the, uh, the YMCA does the bed race. And, um, you know, I'd like to see if we can get some more beds in there. Uh, it'd be nice if the city uh, could get a bed going, maybe a department or maybe a couple departments uh, could egg each other on, you know, see who's going to have the faster uh, bed. Um, but, uh, but yeah, just so you know, I, I think the firemen, you guys still have a bed, right? Yes, yeah. Sir. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the more beds, the, the better. You know, let's, let's get a big competition going on. Right. And maybe we could have a council bed, you know, who knows? <laughs> Fred can sit there. Yeah. Fred, yeah, Fred can lay in the bed and yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the helmet. Or I can put Fred. a hatch on the water Yeah, power. you can put a hatch on it. There, there you go. go. <laughs> um, number one, um, I'm going to go back to what Amy said, uh, and I agree with I agree with both individuals. Uh, it shouldn't be a litmus test. It shouldn't be so narrowly focused as that was. I also agree with Peter that if you pass this, that another council in another day could change it. But if you remember when the last time we discussed it, I said if we passed it, we must immediately move to put it on the ballot for a charter amendment, and I said, I guarantee you it will pass by a landslide because that's what the people want. And, and the other thing about it is all the things that you're talking about are where somebody comes in and is asking to change the comp plan, typically on something we don't want to change or we're right now not disposed to change. So making it tougher to pass is not a bad thing. It's not the other the other type of things, you know. So that's that's all I have to say. Great. And I, but I will also talk to Audrey too about because I got ideas I want to make sure. We <laughs> and, and if I can just raise one point, I am having one of the law clerks go and listing how many votes were five, two, six, one, four, three. So I kind of have a, a listing for council so they can kind of also sense 
How often does this actually? Oh, you'll occur? definitely see the vast majority will be seven to nothing. Oh yeah, General, yes. Yeah, That's without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. And I, but I, I appreciate that, Audrey, but I don't think that's going to be that helpful in the sense of what we're addressing here, but that's one man's opinion. All right. But thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, wonderful Memorial Day ceremony. It's, you know, we've certainly hit on that. I mean, Dave Grassi and, and his father and just, I mean, the list goes on and on of people that participated in that. Thank you. It was very, very special, very, very touching, very moving. So thank you for that. Uh, I do want to give a quick update that Carl and I and members of the council and members of the community went up to meet with the uh, school board, Dr. Adkins and Mark Mora this week. Very much, very much um, uh, committed to the high school coming to Bonita Springs, despite what other, some candidates running for the school board are grandstanding and trying to say. <laughs> they are committed to coming to Bonita Springs. They are still committed to the Imperial site and uh, the possibility of a backup site on Old 41 south of the charter school. So we should know something very, very soon, hopefully this week. And um, my understanding is it will be this week, but if not, certainly early next week, they're gonna make a decision and uh, we're gonna have a high school. So I just wanna um, re reaffirm that commitment. And um, despite all the posturing going on, um, th they are committed to bringing it here, so. Mm -hmm. And now, Carl, if you have anything to add to that, or I agree with your report. Right, right. Okay, wonderful. Okay, council. Anything else? Okay, let's go to approval of the minutes of the May 18th workshop. So moved. Second. So moved and second. Any discussion? Roll call. Councilman Gibson. Aye. Councilman Forbes. Aye. Councilwoman Carumba. Mm -hmm. Aye. Councilman Dewitt. Aye. Mayor Simmons. Aye. Councilman O'Flynn. Aye. Okay, public comment. Any member of the public like to, like to speak at this time? Alan, how you doing, buddy? Hey, you guys. Must feel good to get up and stretch, huh? <laughs> thank you, yeah. Um, well, I walk all day easily, but Alan Glazier, thank you. I want to thank you all about the water tower. Um, uh, Fred, I did, was thinking when we we're discussing this, and of course, I don't know how much input we're gonna be able to do at this point, but. When you build a roof, you have ventilation. You uh, usually have a little overhang. And then, um, so, you know, I would believe that if it's done properly, we're gonna have some access there. Uh, if you wanna put a hatch in the side of it, maybe we can put the time capsule in there. But uh, uh, anyways, I, I do think that, you know, at least on, have something on the top that would give us a little ventilation, if not, at least a little soffit around the sides and like that would be, uh, we, and you need ventilation in a roof, so hopefully this contractor sounds very good and uh, that will, uh, I do know that one of the carpenters that's done work that works for him, so hopefully. Uh, I, I will like to say again, or don't wanna say or like to say it, but why do we have to get to this point? I'm just gonna bring that up again. Please, let's not have to do an 11th hour thing to where we have to have and I'm sorry, I'm just gonna say it. I consider it to be politics and I just don't think we need to do that. Just, you know, let's get her done, And, uh, and but I do appreciate it. Uh, Mike, about the uh, palm trees or whatever, uh, I just noticed the other day I was uh, in a parking lot and I thought, wow, this palm tree really did a nice job of, of uh, shade and uh, just a thought. And they seem to grow a lot better and faster and a lot of these parking lots around here what do we do we see these people that go in and put in these trees and like that and then five years they rip them out and then we don't never get any good growth out of them anyhow so just an idea so anyways thank you all thank you Alan. anybody else from the public at this time okay motion to adjourn yes. all right we're adjourned <laughs>